Hey guys, today I'm going to go over four different freehand airbrush textures you can use to create artwork. I doodled this up, you know, pretty quickly, and then I'm going to show you guys where I use those textures in this picture and how you're going to be able to incorporate them into your own artwork. Without textures, your paintings and portraits are probably going to come out looking like a bad Snapchat filter. So all we'd have to do to achieve some really good realism in this picture is add some eyelashes, finish up these eyebrows, and throw in some highlights here and there. And really quickly, we, were, we would be able to create a fairly realistic piece of artwork. Obviously, there's a little bit of difference between exact textures and texture effects, but you'll find places that you can use these texture effects throughout your artwork all the time. Okay, the first texture, and most widely known, and you may have seen this one before, is the figure eight texture, and it's called the figure eight texture because it is simply a figure eight. So what you're doing is holding a consistent value, and then you're just making figure eights, and you're going to start moving the figure eight and overlapping the figure eight. Obviously, that does not look the same as if I just painted a dot. And why is this useful? This is useful because if you're doing portraiture and you don't put any texture in whatsoever, then that portrait's going to wind up looking like a bad Snapchat filter. And where I would use it in a picture? And this is actually in real time in where I'm using that figure eight texture along that eye. Another common airbrush texture is, I was recently one of uh, the other airbrush artists called this the bounce texture. I had no idea it actually had a name, but it makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is hold down my trigger pull back at a consistent value and I'm not going to change that and I'm merely going to go in so I'm never stopping the flow of paint I'm just bouncing up and down and it seems pretty tedious but you'll realize when you start doing this that you can actually feel a pretty large area of sheet with textures very very quickly and like anything else you can alter the intensity and that's going to create a different look than if you use a lighter texture than if you use darker texture and where I would use it in a picture and notice the difference between um, how I'm laying that out in other words I'm running really far between as I'm pulling in and out and creating one look and then as I get here I am simply dotting really close together, but it's the same, the same thing. I'm doing the same thing, just doing it farther apart and with different intensities. Now the next texture, this one I use on skin more than anything else, is simply an X pattern. I like to think of it like a figure eight, because even though it's an X pattern, so I'm going like this, and I'm going to crisscross over itself or let's do that a little darker so you can see what I'm doing so even though it's dark and then of course I might elongate that very long like this and that particular texture let's do that darker The reason I say I like to think of it as a figure eight because even though I unlike a figure eight if I was elongating a figure eight texture you would still get when you came back across yourself you get the circle ending whereas this doesn't so all I'm doing is I'm working down back down back but I start to develop a pattern where I'm working in a figure eight motion and I'm merely stopping the flow of paint 
back on with the paint and by thinking of it like a figure eight so i'm going to put in my x pattern in here and then on top of that i will come in and do a little bit of blending and shading on top of that as well as some deeper textures and wrinkles and then the last one that i'm going to go over right now is one i use all the time and it's really not its own separate but let's think of it as a figure eight with bounce built in so i'm doing my figure eight motion but i'm also varying my intensity so my figure eight is kind of like some crazy roller coaster so i'm doing like and I do it at very low intensity. Of course. So what's happening is I'm not only... I'm doing it at a higher intensity so you can actually see what's happening on the screen. And that motion combined creates another dimension to that effect. It looks different than the straight up figure eight texture. It definitely looks different than your X pattern texture and it definitely looks different than your bounce texture on its own. It's closely resembling the figure eight, but it's a figure eight while we're altering the height. So I'm coming in, out, and rolling around like this. All right, now let's run through the entire painting at, uh, you know, a little bit of a hyper speed and see if you can start to pick up the different things that I'm doing. One, you know, that I did the dot texture and I did the figure eights over there and running it out there. And then notice where I'm using um, dagger strokes for the eyelashes or the eyebrows, even though I haven't completely finished this painting or made it complete, you know, we're going to have all those different things. So we'll do a, the combination of those texture patterns as well as a combination of line work and a combi combination of gentle blending and maybe even some darker blending in a few places. All of that combined together is what creates the total picture. So I want you to look, pay attention, and see if you can spot where I'm blending stuff out and where I'm putting in textures. I mean, I can pick this up really easily and see what I'm doing. Of course, I know exactly what I did. Um, if you do need to slow down, you can slow, the, slow this down so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, of course, you saw the most important part, the actual textures parts. Also should be noted, I'm working with just one color, obviously. Um, I'm just using a sepia tone right there and continuing to build. So, you know, as you keep layering on it, things will get darker. And there are times I'm using the same technique, maybe tw two or three times over the same area. And then sometimes I'm just simply using that technique once, but there may be times in which you want to reduplicate that texture. So you might want to duplicate the texture at lighter intensities and doing it two or three times over versus just going through one time at a higher intensity. As a matter of fact, most of the time I use these textures, it is very rare for me to ever run them at, you know, a very heavy intensity. Most of your textures like that will tend to be subdued and there are places that they're not as subdued. Um, but you can always build on top of that and with the combination of blending, shading, things like that, it all combines together to create, you know, one cohesive picture. Obviously, this is not, uh, you know, photorealistic. All I'd have to do is add some highlights and a few things to it, and it would be. All right, guys, hope you got a little something out of this. I hope you really enjoyed the 
tutorial today. Um, once again, if you liked the video, you know, give me that thumbs up, like, share, all that good, really cool stuff that we got, you know, for to go on. And remember, guys, that you can always find more tutorials over on my Patreon channel. If you don't know where my Patreon page is, Patreon, it's W Leon Artistry under Patreon, or you can click on it for my YouTube channel. And, you know, you guys know I've got the kit page I'll have linked down below. So if you guys are purchasing through the affiliate link, you know how that works. I get a little bit of money, and you guys don't pay anything extra. But anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all stopping by. Y'all have a good one. We'll catch you next time.